Um, we from the Virtumat 2 team, we ask ourselves, what is the most important thing for an e-commerce system? What, what is always the trouble with the clients? And the most important thing for us is the flexibility. It's impossible what people can invent for their mart. Yeah? Every time, every day, every week, there is a new model, a new system, a new idea, a new method to sell something. So um, this is for us the first important thing. We want to write a core which is flexible. And the second thing is speed. Speed lowers resources, makes it cheap. And for example, Virtuma 2 is... Uh, ah, nice. Uh, Virtual Mode 2 uh, takes only 60% of the resources of Virtual Mode 1, so you can actually um, handle on the same server 30% more customers. It lowers the fixed resources, the money. This boosts together the flexibility and the speed. This makes uh, the core powerful. It has power to, that you can reach everything what you want. So, how do we get this flexibility? That's a question. What is, what do you need? Okay, the answer in former days was, yeah, a lot of features, yeah. Then you have an administration system and it's overboarded. The, the people starting with it, they say, ah, oh, there's so many stuff I don't know. Should I use product types? Should I use variants? Should I what? Whatever, or a tool for every everything. When we add the tools for every possibility, then we have again the same problem. Yeah, we have a lot of features. Most people don't need it. A lot of features make the program slow. There's and the thing is, we, we can't earn any money with it. Yeah, because we earn our money with features. The third-party developers. So it makes no sense to have to say, yeah, we have big program with a lot of features and the thing is every feature makes new bugs and then you are just um, trying to repair the bugs of the new features and the core uh, will get slower and it's, it's uh, not easy to extend that so the real thing is ah I was already at this point you don't need that yeah? Freedom. The freedom to choose is for us the most important thing to reach this flexibility. So we want to make it scalable. It should be possible for the small guy in a village just selling two, two products. And the son says to his father, come on, father, I make you an e-commerce system. Or it should be possible for big, big e-commerce systems like IKEA or Media Markt that they can use it also, that they can extend it the way they need it. So this makes it flexible, but many people think, okay, this is open source, I can write it my way. No, open source does not automatically, automatically provide that is freedom, freedom ideology. So you need a good architecture and the program itself to provide this freedom. And um, we want to use that with a model view control, but model view control is not everything. We need objective oriented program. So you can make code reuse, but when you make code reuse, we have the problem you change here a little bit of the code. And it's changing there, and yeah, there, and there. So objective oriented programming means we have a black box black box is everything doing for you. This is very important that uh, the old method is every time flow orientated. It's, um, they gather the, the information of a product differently according to what they want to show. Do we want to show the product in a detail or do we want to show the product in a list? Then the former times we choose different methods to load the products. Now we say we use every time the same method. The method itse uh, itself decides 
should I take everything or just a little bit of it or what? So that third party developers just say, get product, done. It's not important if the product is a child, a clone or whatever. Get product, gives you the product. And the idea is that this objective oriented programming, when we do it correct, is not only reusing code. It will lowers the resources and the fascinating thing is when two objective programmers come together, they don't need to talk. One makes a product, another one makes the orders and it works together. They just, just need to find the API between the two things. In the PHP world, I must say, there is no OOP. It's very, very rare to find it. There, in Joomla core there are some OOP, but most of time I don't find OOP. So, we have new architectural concepts and virtual mode 2. Um, before, you know, maybe in virtual mode 1, you had uh, the Joomla user, the shopper, the store owner, and then when you wanted to change an email, you had to, to, to change the email at three places, three locations. You had two or three objects for one real object. One person that was in the code, like three objects. This was very, or well, that is very hard to handle. Then another problem, virtual mode one, is um, that there are different locations to calculate. So we have now one calculator. We have now a rule system, so that the calculator works with the rule system. I explained it more. It's like a, it's like a little, little bit like a, a topic here. Then we have a new plugin system. We don't have our own plugin system. The people wanted to write their own plugin system. I said, why we should write our own plugin system? Joomla is the OS here, and we use the plugin system of Joomla. And we have another template system. We also use just the Joomla template system and extend it the way we need it. So, this is now the calculator. This here is an example. Um, for the prices we calculate for one product. It looks strange why we calculate 10 prices for one product. Of course, when you use the mart, you, you show your customer only three prices. Maybe the price without tax and the final price. Or you show the discounted price and the, the tax, uh, the discount amount. That's it. So you can decide for yourself what I want to go, which way. What should I want to say, you save 10 euro, or I want to say, that's the final price, buy it. You can choose yourself. And here on the, um, this is how we do multi-currency. Every product, every rule, everything has a common currency. Before you calculate it, you get a shop currency. Then you can choose as shopper your own currency. What means that? That means you buy a product in dollar in the US. Now we have a new currency uh, system. You can add our currencies. You can say, okay, I bought it in September. I said the currency for this product, US dollar, September, set my own exchange rate. Then you can calculate your tax and your discount, everything, euro. And the customer comes from Russia, or it comes from Swiss. And see in this currency and the right currency format. We have now a currency format for every single currency. But that the US guys see it in their format, and the India people see it in their format. So, the rules. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not complete list. Yeah. We always say, when there's someone who says, I want to calculate that or this, we say, okay, come on, help us with the calculator. You can add, add your ideas. The idea is that we, the rules make the discount, we make the taxes. The duty is not completely done yet, but uh, the idea is from, that it looks in the card to which country it should be delivered, then you can make different prices for different counties. You can even calculate your profit. 
They just say, it's a rule, never, no one should see it, I won't make profit 20%, that's it. You can, it should also be for commission when you have a multi-vendor system. Uh, so the multi-vendor thing, uh, it's capable, that means when you are a developer, you want a multi-vendor system, it depends what you want, then you can write it within a week or a month, before it was very hard to write. So, like that. Okay. We have now a new card. Mm. The trick at the new card is that everything is stored in the section. And there's no steps to check out. The new card goes through a function and checks okay. There is no payment method. It displays the payment method. Choose the payment method. There is no shipment. It displays the shipment. There is no address. It displays the name. You enter the address. But there is not a step you have to follow. When you come in as customer, and you already choose this stuff, you directly get to the checkout. It's like one-click checkout. It's, we did not the one-click checkout because in most states, say, uh, the checkout is like a contract. So you have to first confirm the last step. No. And um, the new checkout system is very flexible. Um, and the new thing is also that we do not have different functions for um, displaying, checking the data for the final data. But I think many problems know the Many people know the problem with the PayPal Express. The PayPal Express problem is that um, we calculate the data at the product, we calculate the data when you put it in the cut, we calculate the data new when you show it in the cut, and we calculate uh, not so many. Thomas Karl knows such things. He's better than me. Uh, it's a very chaotic system. Uh, it's calculating every time new and new and new and new and new. And we just say here, data in the cut, and now. Everything uses the data out of the card or directly from the calculator, which is every time using the same rules to calculate. So, the plugin system. It was a hard fight to understand that. Um, most people said when you use Joomla plugin system, you have to configure it in Joomla. And I say, why? I'm a programmer, I can configure it where and why, who, whatever, how I want it. So, we install the new plugins, just normally in Joomla, but then we don't go on the Joomla configuration tab. And we go to Virtual Mart, then you can configure plugins directly in Virtual Mart. And it's of course, it's our new um, philosophy. When there's someone who says, I want a new plugin, I don't have the hooks, write to me, we add the hooks, we make a small maintenance update, and at the moment the hooks are inside. Uh, adding hooks is, uh, yeah, when they, someone has an idea, just come to it. For example, here is uh, payment plugins. This is, that means multi-vendor capable. Before it was only possible to install a payment plugin, but to give it one configuration. That's it. Now you install the payment plugin as normal Joomla plugin. Then you can configure this payment plugin for every single vendor. This makes it possible that you can have five different vendors and all of them have different PayPal uh, data. Huh? Okay, the next thing is with the template. Um, the trick is, okay, there was some confusion. People tried to do this template system within Joomla because now we have normal views. You can just choose the view card, choose the view category, or choose the uh, view virtual mart, home page, or whatever. And the template system we are using is just overwriting the Joomla system. And that's not overwriting the system, it is overwriting the chosen template. So you can say, all categories should be shown in another uh, template than my green shop. Or you can say 
I have winter clothes and I have summer clothes. Okay, when the people see all clothes normally, then they have my shop template. Then they get on the winter category, they see the winter category template. When they go to the summer, then they see the summer category template. You can even use the layout override of Joomla itself. So you can um, say, okay, the layout for the for the panorama product you. I can override that for the winter or I can override that for the summer. You, you can choose it standard for category for product types and then you can override it in each category and product again. There's only one small glitch. I just explain it now I try. The layouts must always lay in the Joomla standard default directory. Because Joomla is reading this directive for the overrides before we can get access with the components. So we just change the template, but the layouts are chosen from the default. It, it, at the end, we just need the, the developers or the people who install the map just need to know that. And uh, But everything you can imagine with, yeah, I have different templates, it works. Okay, and uh, now we have a complex, completely new thing. I must admit it's, it's two weeks old, yeah. Um, I wrote an abstract media handler and some of our developers said, hey, that's a nice pattern. And he wrote a new abstract custom fields. This new custom product has custom fields at the moment. The variants, as before, work with it. The idea is that we can replace almost anything different. You want to make the computer configurator or the car configurator possible or the t-shirt configurator possible. That you can have a product which consists of different products and which um, yeah, you can choose as... I didn't try it completely out, there was no time for it. I, I was happy that it works <laughs> this long. And we know it is one of the features we let in. We say, okay, people should see that we are working on the new system replacing the old system. Right? Because that was one of those multi features. We had product types, attributes, custom variants, and variants. But what should I choose now? The questions in the forum was full of what should we choose? Yeah? And then you had to say, okay, uh, we want to simplify that so that we have only one thing to choose. I was quite fast. Huh? Yeah, last time it was more. Okay, now then we have a, but we can we can handle that later. We can go back. I, I am sure I missed something. What I wanted to say. Um, the new security thing is, of course, we have, we don't have any global. Security. This is this is clear. But um, we also changed the, the model itself to immutable objects. So when we ask a user, the constructor of the user sets if it's allowed to see the data or not. So when you're an administrator and try to look on another user data, it works. But when you're not an administrator, it says, no, I just your, show your user data. And when you're anonymous, it just say, there is no user data. It, it uh, prevents cross-site scripting on the deepest level possible. Not in the controller somewhere, directly in the model, directly in the table. We set this. Okay, the permission apps, uh, the permission object itself, is um, immutable also. Before it was just a global. So, calling the permission object, calling the permission class, set some global variants, and afterwards the other uh, processes ask for this global. But how safe is that? I would say it's uh, not safe. So we have now a permission object. You can just call it. You can get data off, out of it, but you can't set data. So it's harder on the programming level to break it when you can just get the data of private variables, but you can't um, set this data. 
the, the object, object says himself, okay, you're an administrator. That's it. You can just ask administrator or not. You can't say, can't say this user is now an administrator because this is then a method to hack the whole thing. Okay. What do we want to do so next time? Hmm? So I show. <laughs> um, of course, we want we want to add more more stuff for the calculation. We want to make it hook event like the frockens, so that you can say I have a plugin commission or I have a plugin whatever, strange duty system or the Canadian tax system or something like that. You can just install it as plugin. Um, yeah, more hooks, more hooks for plugins. Um, when people have ideas for it, they want to add hooks to the product view um, that you can customize completely your product view to the reviews system, like invoice centers and something like that, um, to the orders. Of course, we want to extend the multi-vendor feature, and uh, there's often a misunderstanding. The people mis mix multi-vendor with multi-store and um, multi-vendor. What, what is multi-vendor? Uh, what means it? Some people think, okay, I will have one database, a lot of stores. No, this is multi-store. Okay, okay this is multi-store. What is multi-vendor? And then other people think, okay, it's like an affiliate stuff. Uh, now we come in the direction. But there exist maybe eight different ideas of multi vendor. Multi vendor can even be just a store owner has five employees and he wants to know who is doing what. But the customer shouldn't notice it. Also, multi vendor. No? The normal vendor in the margin selling the stuff. It's not the owner of the market, it's just working with it. Multi vendor can also mean eBay. The vendor, eBay, multi vendor, plus a plugin for. Auction system is eBay. That's it. Um, so this is a multi-vendor. is a tricky thing because most people have only two things in their head, or not. that's it. And uh, there's even the question to say that the manufacturer itself is a vendor, setting products within the shop with a contract. Okay, when I set the product within the shop, I, I uh, deliver, deliver it to the warehouse. There was a question. Remember someone in Italy asking that? Uh, yeah, and then we want to reach uh, better communication with the community components, like a community builder, that we use same tables or get a good synchronization. Because we know uh, there are other shops like Presto Shop or Magento. What, what is the advantage? Advantage here for Jum in Jumla? The advantage is that we have community components. A shop with the forum, for example. And um, this uh, world of social shopping is growing. It's growing fast. It's a trend since three years, maybe. I don't know if uh, people uh, notice that, uh, but uh, it's a trend to say, um, I buy there because I like the people there. I pay two euros more. So it's, not, it's nothing. If I pay 20 or 22 euro, I buy there because I like the people. This effect is growing, and uh, this is ah, hey. Um, this is um, our advantage, in Joomla. General, generally, in Joomla, it's our advantage that we can do combination with social stuff. Yeah, and then a new thing. Um, want to? We have a new ph philosophy. Eat what you write. That means I um, want to install virtual mark 2, I think after May, um, after the Jumla Day in Greek. Uh, we want to install virtual mark 2 in Orsh on, on virtualmark.net. And um, third party developers can sell their extensions, themes um, directly. And then we, we have to use our store ourselves. And then, uh, yeah, when you use it yourself, you understand the users better. And we want uh, to introduce a wide scalable support. We want to start with a low level support, just progression, 
There are often people asking very silly, simple questions. You can answer them within five minutes or ten minutes. But when they try to look at for it in, in the forum or in a book, they, they took two hours or even longer. When they found the answer. So we want to uh, add a widely scalable support for high virtual mod directly on the net. And there's another thing I didn't want on it is a new um, system to use uh, tickets for an individual job. As someone, it's often happen. People ask you, and then you say, okay, I can write you that for you 500 euro. And then you have to make on this support, you have to transform it in a job. So that is, uh, that's a completely new thing we are thinking about the last four weeks to uh, enable more support. Because most people say the problem is support. The pro most problem is uh, the small support, just the question, the small question. Okay, then uh, let's start a little demo, maybe first, and then we make some questions again, and uh, I jump back to the to the sheets. No. That's a completely another thing. What is that? That's a new virtual map 1.1 theme. Just that you see, um, the team is actually strong changing the old virtual map ways. We have a new demo for virtual map 1. You can actually try it. It's our, our new designer in the team. He also designed the new template for version map 2. And that's, I think that's directly on the page, yeah? Yeah, directly on the page. Okay, but this is not the new one. This is just to show version map changed. <laughs> Okay, take a look. You see, make away template. Not uh, boring. So, okay, okay, no. Here you can see the new stuff here. We have here currency selector. Calculating it now in dollars. We have here prices. By the way, all of the blocks. Because in virtual one, we have a lot of double blocks. What? Semicolons. Semicolons? No, it's a dot with a. This is a semicolon. But two dots? A column. Colon, ah yeah, that's what it yeah, yeah, exactly. Removed a lot of colons out of the code because colons are very stressy. When you are a Chinese guy, do you use colon? Mm -hmm. When you use Arabic, do you use colon? No. So these people had just for another language, they just had to start taking the core. Yeah? This is, uh, we want to avoid that freedom. Okay. Oh, it's not sharp, huh? Now the beam is six Yeah. Okay. I, I just show you now uh, a nice example, the nice saw. The nice saw was almost nice. Um, this is a new calculation system. 
Ajax. It's updated with Ajax. Good times. Then we have, of course, new Apple Card. Ah. It's a little bit slow here. Okay. You can go to continue shopping. Point you to the last category. You can go to show card. And here you have the card. It's a little bit. Uh, uh, the design doesn't fit perfectly. It's a release candidate. Yeah. So the new idea is you can just. Press on check out here. Or you can do it yourself. Oh! Okay. That's the ball up. I didn't uh, configure it. Because we have now we have now every currency we found in this world. <laughs> Uh, thanks to Valerie, she added uh, all currencies with a sign, with format, into the database. So this was really tough to find the information. And we know that a lot of people drop out in the checkout process. For example, here I forgot. Oh. Hey, I was in the shop already. Yeah. You see, without going out of the checkout process, I have the data inside. And I can say, okay. This is a developer notice for us. Then you can just yeah, it was just a simple simple demo, yeah. But for me it's important this stuff. How often you go on the mark, you add your stuff, then you remember, oh yeah, I was registered here. Then you log in and then you're dropped out of the checkout process. And then you have to look, oh, what was my card? It often happened to me when I explained my mother at the phone. <laughs> she should buy something like that. So. Hi. Of course. There are some, uh, sometimes notices and parts uh, of people over. We forgot to add the box here. Okay, let's check out. Now we should just get the confirm. When you want to make a one-page checkout, there's it almost. You just have to adjust it to your country, to your law, to your what you want, etc. Okay. Panel. 
and we, we made the whole thing a lot smaller. We have now the categories here direct products, custom fields, product files, reader files, the inventory, the tax and calculation rules, the custom rules. This is, this is what you need mostly every day. But you don't need the configuration every day. The configuration was before at the top. Yeah. A little bit stupid. Can we change that? You can see here. <laughs> okay. Demonstration, yeah. It's not uh, as always. What can go wrong first? <laughs> How can I go back with the Macintosh? Backspace. Backspace. Yeah, the problem is my computer crashed last presentation. <laughs> and I repaired it. I got it two, two days before I got it back. So, uh, I wanted to show that, but the um, So. It is quite easily, there was a big discussion about rounding problems. And the people say, yeah, it's mathematic, rounding must be perfect fitting. No, rounding is not mathematics. You leave the mathematics, rounding is physics. You're not doing real mathematics. So, rounding makes errors. It depends on what you want to sell. So you have here in Virtual Mart now, you have the, the possibility to say, okay, the tax per product, or I do the tax per bill. When you sell a lot of small products, like screws, you sell a thousand screws, then make the tax per bill. And when you sell a lot of big products, big amount of money, then tax per product. Or you can say, this is the business, tax per bill, or for the end consumer, tax per product. I mean, two things. So that means you are one time calculating the tax per item, per single item. Yeah. All items that we have going to do next, for item one, one, yeah. and then you are making a total of at least... It's, it's booth, it's booth, booth it's legal. At least in Germany. I asked my, uh, my tax lawyer. He said, you can... You can make the text per product and combine it, but then you sum up the small rounding errors, or you make uh, just say I calculate uh, sum up all items together, and then at the end I make one. Text. You can even choose different currencies for every rule. Yeah, of course there's a lot of currencies just published. Uh, Okay, the views just not working, don't know, okay. But uh, you can just unpublish currencies now. You can, you can just unpublish them, or you can say they don't work. So you find a text per item? Yeah. You can even define a text per category. Or you want to say, okay, or per shopper group. There's power tools. I want a new text for power tools. Because this is what most people do. Before checks is very hard to calculate, but it works. And here, um,
you set here the currency of the product, you set here the cost price in dollar, then it cal calculates for you the base price in euro, and then it shows you which rules and taxes are affecting. You can override that. And then it shows you the final price. And you can even say, hey, come on, I want what I like. Ah, French. Now we override, override. Now we just get 60 euro. You can you can override every rule. You see which rule would work generically, like every rule. So, you can override the final price for some special feature. It happens something that you say, okay, this product, the event was yesterday. I just wanted to sell this T-shirt, for example. And then you can just say, I make five euro. That's it. That it recalculates. These are the ideas for the extra components. Of course, I know. That it makes this rule calculates it back. It calculates it back, yeah. This, as I said, this is a nice, very good idea for an extension. Maybe someone writes the extension, maybe we rewrite the extension, maybe we add it to the code. It's uh, it's always necessary to change the price of the object. Yeah. So if no, 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 this is this is this thing. This is the complete final price for the set. And you just take the German beer and like the set. And you make a roundabout, you just add the 13%. You no? Know? When you add 19%, you have to remove 13%. You have to calculate it yourself. Yeah, at this, this special case. But what you're doing is you override the complete system. Normally you should work with the system. Then it's no problem. It's working for you. Correct. There's also another thing. Images. You can just attach a new image to the product. Now we have three images. And the nice thing is also when you choose a. You have always the last, the last stuff written here. So when you change your, what to, to upload a row, a series of images, you always see the last entered stuff. So you can, you can choose if you want to upload a new one. You can always choose if you want to upload a new one or just replace the old one. You can just directly upload them. Yeah. These files are in the SQL. This we have no real media files in the SQL. XREF to product, category, manufacturer, and so on. And um, yeah, we will add a search. And we will add a select category. That to say, you want only the files of the category. The Im There's no difference. It's just a media handler. It's just a media handler. The media handler handles every kind of files. 
at the moment only images. But it's very easy to add PDF or with hooks. We want to do with hooks. It's an abstract class handling all kinds of data and designing by the extension which specialized class it is using. I just wrote it for the files and uh, for the pictures at the moment because it's most important for us. But physical. Yeah. Here, you can define the path where. Look at that. The configuration. You can also put it outside, but then you have to set the right base restriction, right. or you get 404. Um, it is automatically using some data, for example. Just upload the file, don't think about thumbnailing. Normal servers can thumbnailing when your server can't do thumbnailing, you should choose another server, I would say. Um, Yeah, no, no. Uh, removed some configuration settings like um, SSL and such stuff. It's doing now about Joomla. And uh, here you can see the cabinet template you can choose, or um, the layout, or the standard product layout that's on the default at the moment. And then, also interesting is pricing. Then you just say, no, we don't want to see the base price. Base price is only important for the for the shop owner. You don't want to see the tax amount or the discount amount. You can say show it with tax or just without tax, just the final number. Yeah. Oh yeah, also interesting for some uh, is uh, we have the CEO integrated in Virtual Guide. So you don't need an extra component for it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, there will be a migrator, but there are some things we can't migrate, like the discounts, and then we must write a tool to write for that uh, calculation rule system. But this may happen that uh, looks uh, we have thousand products, thousand discounts, you get thousand rules of it. That's not the fun, or I think people should reconsider and say, okay, now I have to now new tools and uh, maybe I should uh, change my um, calculation system, my idea, my discount system. This you can you can enter the product. Hmm? Thousand, maybe fifty thousands. The biggest merchant I heard was ninety thousand products. Hmm? It should be possible for them, yes. Main problem is, uh, yeah, but but within, but but within a normal time frame. Normal time frame. I mean, when you have a shop of fifty thousand products, and and you manage it to to get the shop running within two weeks, you have fifty thousand products. I think that's quite okay, or one week. Four weeks is too long. Order is created when you when PayPal says okay.
the, the trick is the trick is now we use the normal Joomla hook system. So when we write the paper plugin, we can just decide do we that or that way. PayPal will be part of the base. I'm quite sure about it. I'm not quite sure about PayPal but Express, but as I said before, eat your own code. We want to establish a shop on virtualmat.net, shop.virtualmat.net for third party developers, for theme people, for people who make layouts, whatever. And uh, we need for that PayPal. So we will write PayPal. And everything we need for our own shop will be free, of course. Ah, yeah, every payment plugin creates its own tables. Every, we have an abstract table creation tool. Oscar wrote it, and um, when you install a plugin, the plugin says, or even also the shipment plugin says, okay, I need this table, create the table, and then it's everything built in its own table. No mix anymore. Maybe we could we could add it as option. Should should uh, the order be created when PayPal says yes, or should the order be created just when the consumer press confirmed? Because it's all it's also a legal thing. It's also a legal thing. In some countries, is the user said confirmed that he has to pay. There's no chance to get out. And additional to it, when you're an end consumer, you have another right. When you are a businessman, yeah. When you are a businessman. You can't say after a week, oh no, I don't want it any longer. But as end consumer, you can say that, at least in Germany and in Europe. So uh, we have to look how we want to do it. Maybe I think the best thing is on options. Yeah. So this, uh, there are a lot of small details in it, like this. Uh, I forgot to say this that the, every plugin can create its own table and its storing and. Yeah. directly in it. I'm, 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 I'm very, 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 very... Hey, I worked with Roland one year. I never talked with him. I never saw on him. I'm very interested to see Roland here. Very interested. Uh, But, but it's, uh, I can also say that we removed a lot of Roland's code. He's a very good, uh, quick and dirty programmer. Very good. You need that. You need that. When you have customers who just want to say one week, one day, he's very good. But um, it was a hard fight for us. Um, we, we, we want to provide a core working for five years or longer. Yeah. So we, we, I, I had quite hard standards. Yeah. Include once is forbidden. Include once is the baddest invention PHP did. We do if class exists and require. 
Because when I call a thousand times include once, it takes one second. When I call hundred thousand times if class exists, it's just a pointer, checked, just a flag. It's not even completely calculated on the record on the on the in the assembler, you know? On the so you can call it one hundred thousand times and it takes just one point one 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 uh, one point zero 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 one seconds. It's and uh, we reduce the um, this we reduce the RAM by forty percent, the speed by thirty percent. We reduce the speed, reduce the waiting time for the, on the page, of course. Yeah, I must say um, I don't concentrate on the SEO. There is someone who says I want to do the SEO. I say to him, "Good, well, do it." The other problem with the SEO is when we change a little bit, we say just we don't use views. We say okay, we use controller here in the, in the um, in this here. We don't use you. We use controller for example. Then SEO gets broken again. SEO is a cosmetic thing. You have to do it at the end every time. You have to adjust it. For every release, you have to adjust it again. Yes. We it is we we it is we, we just use the normal Joomla shape. Just use the normal Joomla. And with J1.6 worked as far as I know, it was not a problem. Uh, we had the problem with J1.6 that Regimart was compatible, then we got the new version out, broke again. One week later, compatible, okay, new version out, broke again. Yeah, after the third version, we said, okay, go ahead, clean your stuff, make your homework. When you have a version functioning the next two years, like 1.5 without breaking, then we we'll make it compatible again. But it makes no. Huh? I just told it. There is one in the team. He says, I want to do it for the final version. The final version should be have now a recent, recent cycle uh, from two months. We won't hold that. Release cycle. So he says, I want to do it compatible, and in two months, they will have a finished 1.6. And we know we can't be compatible to 1.7 when we don't make the step to 1.6. So we will do the step to 1.6, of course, but uh, not now. <laughs> it's our primary time. And, and you look, a mad e commerce shouldn't be fancy. It should be secure. I must say I don't trust. I don't trust one point six. I I I I I I have the deviant philosophy. Deviant philosophy. Yeah. You have a stable. Deviant. Deviant is not slow. Two months. Yeah. What? Well, exactly. Exactly, exactly. In version mod 2.2, we think uh, in um, to Merry Christmas maybe, and then, for uh, of course, uh, compatible to for uh, J1.7. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly the point. You can ex enter the. Ex um, there's a two different questions inside. The first thing is, okay, at the moment we just use the old module brought by Virtual 1.1 for the European Union. Uh, we want to make this also a plugin that you install your currency updater as a plugin. And then you can just choose it here. 
just choose it here. And um, I wanted to show the currencies. I don't know why, the, maybe the testing environment. Um, the ideas of the currencies, you can say, okay, I have the normal dollar. I don't enter any exchange rate. You don't enter any exchange rate. It uh, takes a dynamical one. When you enter an exchange rate, you get the one you enter. Because when you buy a lot of products in September, you want to calculate with the exchange rate of September, or not? When the dollar is changing very fast, your calculation would get uh, screwed up when you use uh, another exchange exchange rate. Right? So you can you can have five dollars, dollar September, dollar October, or dollar two thousand five. <laughs> And uh, can choose for every product another dollar. Exchange rate is written down in the order plane because the exchange rate of the date while you're ordering it is important, not the day yeah, when you send it. The exchange rate from the, in, in this in this from the European Bank from the European Bank. This this example, but but I know it isn't a plugin yet. We, it, it was a plugin, a version at one point one plugin, but this plugin, the system, I said no, it is not converted yet. You will, you can, you can, you can just upload your uh, file as before in the right directory, and then you can choose it here. <laughs> it's not so that it does not work. It's not just not clean. I'm not sure if I understood you, I must yeah, admit. Then sag mal auf Deutsch. B2B ist eh keine Watte. B2B ist ja eh die Watte immer durchreichbar. Look here, look at that. The calculation rules you can make it dependable for sure. 
B2B customer, not registered. Impossible, because the definition of a rural businessman is that he has a tax number and he has to show the tax number. Dann hast du verstanden, was ich gerade gesagt habe? Der, 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 der B2B-Customer, der muss sich ja irgendwie ausweisen, sonst ist er ja keiner. Der muss ja seine Watt zeigen. Sonst nennt man das Steuerbetrug. Okay, okay. Okay, no, we don't have this yet. This is true. But, but, but. Germany, we try to say here, I want the long form to pay for this calculation, for this voice, that you have to show the one and the other one. So you go, I'm a tax. Yes, but I mean, they will be customer. No, we didn't. We didn't edit it yet. We didn't edit it yet. Would be a nice idea for a plugin. I would say. 